What's up everybody, Dr. Phil here with AI Superhero, where we stay one step ahead of our robot overlords. Often I get asked the question, how do you even get started in data science? I get it, it's a pretty daunting field, right? There's so many things you have to know. So I'm going to break it down for you in a sequence of two videos. I'm going to focus on a couple different things, and the first of which is something I think most people miss when they talk about transitioning from whatever you're doing currently into becoming a data scientist. So let's get to it. So how do you even get started on data science? Well, you have to understand that science is the operative word, and that's really what you want to focus on. As a data scientist, your job isn't just to take a look at data, to process, to visualize. Your job is really to analyze, interpret, and then make recommendations based on that data. And so to do that, you really have to understand the scientific method, right? You have to understand the process of making predictions, testing hypotheses, and looking at the outcome of those experiments, right? So you have to know how to formulate a good hypothesis. You have to know how to uh, design experiments, not necessarily the sense of experiments in a lab, but saying if something is true, then something else must also be true. So let's take a look at the data and see how that bears out. So the first thing is to focus on the science. And of course, that really requires that you have a good physical understanding of whatever system it is that you're working with. So, a bit of an anecdote, uh, I used to be a process engineer at Intel Corporation, and what that means is I was responsible for uh, finding the source of defects as well as improving the overall process on my particular tool set. I was a dry edge process engineer. It just means that we use plasma to edge the wafers instead of acids. So, invariably, occasionally we would get a new person in the defect reduction group. And this person was always very gung-ho and looking to find problems, looking to solve problems more importantly. Problem was they were focused entirely on what the data said. So as a consequence, they would typically come to us and say, hey, one of your tools is causing this totally unrelated defect mode, right? We understood the process of etching the wafer. We knew that our tools could produce a certain class of defects. And oftentimes it would happen that you know, some of our tools were down, some other subset of tools were down, and so there would be an uptick in a particular defect mode that happened to correlate with the wafers that run through one of our tools. Does that mean that that correlation, right, that all of these wafers that ran through this tool ended up being bad? Did that imply causation? No, typically these defect modes were something that we had nothing to do with, and that had been known since the process itself was developed. And so what these people lacked was a strong understanding of the physics of the system. And so they were really good at analyzing data and interpreting it to some extent, but they didn't understand the limitations. And so the result was they wasted their time, and then they would come and waste our time, and we would have a chuckle behind their back. So another critical skill you need is the ability to be able to tell stories with your data. So when you're hired as a data scientist, it isn't just to make pretty plots, right? They don't care about necessarily the uh, deliverable, right? They don't necessarily care that the plot is the best possible thing since sliced bread. What they care about is your ability to persuade them to take a particular course of action, right? And that is a whole separate skill set in and of itself. You have to be able to frame a problem uh, and then have some sort of middle to the story where you investigate what you discover and then finally a conclusion where you talk about what you discovered and how that can impact the business. And that's how you be persuasive with data. And that brings me to my final point, is you really want to align with the business interests. So you're not a data scientist just to look at data and you know to have fun. The point, the entire point, is to be able to solve some core business problem. So I didn't tell the core business problem as a process engineer I was attempting to solve was how to minimize defects, right? How to get the most number of good die on a wafer that ran through my tool set. So occasionally we would see anomalous behavior on the tools. So when you do dry edge with plasma, you pump a gas into a system and then bombard it with radio frequency radiation, right? You use RF waves to incite a plasma. And occasionally we would see, when we measured the power transmittance of the plasma, we would see wiggles, right? It would go like this. And of course, this was always very interesting. You know, what's going on inside of the plasma while you're etching? My curiosity was always piqued by this. But it wasn't something I could ever really go look at because it didn't align with the business interest, right? Intel didn't care that I found it fascinating that plasma impedance would wiggle like this. The only question was, does it impact the wafer? Does it impact 
the product we're delivering to our customer that is paying us money, right? So you must always keep in the back of your head how what you're doing applies to the core mission of whatever business you're working in, whether it's healthcare, um, cybersecurity, whatever it is. Always keep in mind how your particular data and what you're presenting actually aligns to what the business needs. So just to recap, the thing that I think most people miss when they talk about transitioning from a current career into data science is a real focus on the science. Focusing on understanding data, what it is telling you about the physical system you're looking at, how to use that to tell stories to persuade management to take some course of action that is going to be beneficial to the core business interests. In part two, I'm going to look at uh, a little bit more into what people typically think of when they hear the words data science. That's all of the so-called hard skills you have to have in order to succeed in the field. I hope this has been helpful. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new content. And hey, if you're running an ad blocker, make sure to whitelist this channel because daddy needs his YouTube money.